Today, we're looking at 25 NBA players that look like they could be stars in the NFL. And we're just looking at players from the past 15 years. Now, we can't say for sure that all of these guys would be great football players, but based on their athletic ability and skill sets in the NBA, it lets us have a pretty good understanding at who would excel. Because what it takes to be an NBA player and an NFL player both do require a lot of the same skills. But okay, before the video starts, I'll be honest here. I really wanted to make this video, but I'm not huge into the NFL. I was a casual fan years ago, but I haven't watched it in a pretty long time. So I'm not going to be great with player comparisons, and I do know the basics behind positions, but I'm not going to get super in depth with why a player belongs where. So cut me some slack on that end. If you're looking for an NBA player to play quarterback, there really isn't many better options. CP3 is quick on his feet, the best team captain you'll find, which is essential to being an NFL quarterback, and as we know, would do great with throwing the ball down the field to open teammates, just like he does every night in the NBA. He's not the best athlete, but as we know, you don't have to be, and a lot of NFL quarterbacks aren't. Plus, in terms of height, he's 6'1", so right in between Lamar Jackson and Michael Vick. For CP3, it's a good guess that he'd make a good quarterback, but for AI, it's almost a fact that he would have been a star in the NFL. In the NBA, we saw his pound for pound legendary athleticism, his 40 plus inch vertical and ability to, you know, in a sense, juke out defenders. Just looking at him on the court, he would have been a great fit. But then you go back and remember just how good of a football player he was in high school. While being his school's star point guard, Iverson was also playing varsity football. And not only as the star quarterback of the team, but he would also play running back defensive back, and would return kicks all in the same game. As a junior, he averaged 31 points a game and won his team the state championship in basketball and became the Virginia Football Player of the Year and also led his football team to the state championship that same season. But that was the last football he ever got to play before he got arrested for his bowling alley incident. And before that all happened, AI was actually planning on attending Notre Dame to play football in college. And he probably would have went to the NFL from there, but that one night changed it all and he eventually switched to basketball. But since then, Iverson's old high school coach said he's coached games against Michael Vick and Ronald Curry while they were in high school, and neither of them even compared to Iverson. And that's why it's believed by a lot of people that if he had stuck with football, he really would have been the original Michael Vick. Okay, this one's a big shift from Allen Iverson, and there's no true evidence that he would be a great quarterback, and I don't know that he really would, but it was at least fun to mention. Even though he's on the smaller side, he's very quick for his size, already runs his team's offense at a high level, and as one of the most accurate shooters in the history of the NBA, you gotta think that at least some of that ability would transfer over to making passes that would fall right into receivers' hands every time. Okay, Ben Simmons as a QB was a suggestion I saw floating around a few posts, so I decided to throw it in here. Now here's the case for it. We've never seen an effective NFL quarterback over a 6'6", and that's because of the fact that they lose a lot of mobility, athleticism, and can't throw as fast at that height. But that's what makes this conversation with NBA players so interesting. Ben Simmons isn't affected by any of those things, and as a matter of fact, is just as athletic as the 6'3 players in the NBA. And the same ability that lets him barrel down the court on a fast break through defenders would let him rush the defense on the football field if he needed to. And if not, his court vision and NBA passing ability would allow him to make perfect passes. And it would make him like a 6 foot 10 Cam Newton. Cam Newton, but 5 inches taller. It would be an experiment that would either go really good or really bad. Okay, I'm not saying he would make the NFL because, you know, honestly, he probably wouldn't. It's just that based on how he plays basketball, the thought is that Kyle Lowry's play style translates Kyle Lowry into at least a perfect running back. For years, he's been described as a pit bull on the court, a guy that, assuming he's physically tough enough, would be more than willing to pound the ball through tackles to get every last yard that he could. Plus, don't forget that he's got some underrated quickness. And to top it all off, he's pretty close to your ideal size and weight for a running back, too. Of course, assuming that he wasn't as injury prone as he was, because as is, he wouldn't have lasted long at all in the National Football League. But had he not been injury prone, bruh. Give me prime Derrick Rose as a running back, wide receiver, or a kick returner on any team. As a receiver, he was lightning quick with a 40 inch vertical, with the body control to twist and turn while in midair. 
and as a running back or kick returner. On the court, he used that same body control to fit through tiny gaps between defenders and bounce off of them to score from wherever he wanted, which would have been extremely useful for him trying to run the ball through holes in the defense. His only downside would be that he would need to put on a lot of muscle to be a running back. And basically, everything that I just said for Rose can be applied to Russ for his case of playing those three positions. And Westbrook's such a unique and talented athlete that I could also see him having a shot at playing as either a cornerback or a safety too. I mean with the speed, agility, and explosiveness he plays with in the NBA, and the tenacity that he plays with on defense, I could see him flying all over the field, breaking up passes, coming out of nowhere for interceptions, and getting some pretty hard hits too. Bruh, put Giannis on offense or defense and the man would be unstoppable. LeBron's always the guy I talked about that would be a superstar in the NFL, but we need to start talking more about Giannis. Could you imagine a 6'3 cornerback trying to jump up and prevent him at 6'10 with a 40 inch vertical from catching a pass down the field? It's not happening. Plus, we know that he's strong and probably just as fast as other receivers and defenders. And same thing can be said if he played on the defensive end. Imagine a quarterback trying to throw a pass down the middle and Giannis just sticks his hand up and bats it away. Or a quarterback trying to throw a pass to a defender over Giannis. I think if he learned the sport the right way, he would have the potential to be a Hall of Fame level talent. Pretty much same thing for KD. Him and Giannis do weigh just about the same, but Giannis is definitely stronger, so I don't think KD would be as successful because he would be able to be pushed around a little bit more. Like I said, LeBron is the one guy that everyone says could make it in the NFL. And that's obvious. Not only would he make it, he'd probably be a Hall of Famer if he made the switch. And everyone that talks about it says that he would play tight end because that's the description his combination of size, strength, and speed fits most. But honestly, he could really play any position he wanted to and excel at it. I'd say his most accurate comparison for an NFL player that we've seen would be a guy like Calvin Johnson. I mean, Megatron was one of the most dominant receivers in the NFL because he was 6'5 and 200 140 pounds. Well, LeBron's 6'8 and 260, and even more athletic. Gronkowski's the better comparison in terms of size, though, seeing that he's 6'6, 270. But again, LeBron's about that size with the athleticism that Calvin had. And of course, we have to mention James's past with football. As a sophomore in high school, he scored 11 touchdowns and was named first team All-State, scored 16 touchdowns as a junior, and started getting scholarship offers from major schools like Notre Dame, before eventually quitting football to focus solely on basketball. He had a very limited time to show his ability, but everyone he played against in that time had seen enough. Old coaches, former quarterbacks, competing teams, and even NFL analysts have come out and said that he was the total package. That he was one of the best high school players they had ever seen, with some even saying he was ready to go into the NFL straight out of high school. Blake Griffin would also make for a great tight end. He's got the overwhelming size, speed, vertical, and ability to make catches that he needs to be a top tier tight end if given the opportunity. I mean, I think most of us can agree, he's one of the easiest players you could see being in the NFL. Tight end would be good, but defensive end would be another position that he could thrive in, again, thanks to his size and frame. He could get the tackle when needed, charge the QB on passes, or drop back and jump up enough for the easy interception. When you need guys to run people over and get to the quarterback or running back as quick as possible, you probably weren't thinking of him, but Glenn Davis has got to be that guy as a defensive tackle. Wasn't ever the best or most athletic NBA player, but a guy his size that wrestled and slammed Shaq when he was in high school and Shaq was in his prime, I mean you gotta believe he could easily bulldoze anyone in front of him. Dwight Howard's another defensive tackle that I saw get suggested a lot in a bunch of different posts about this topic, and it's probably for the opposite reason of Glenn. Prime Dwight was a big and powerful dude, but his athleticism and speed at 6'10 would probably be enough to get around a lot of offensive lines, because a lot of them probably can't move as nearly as quick as Dwight Howard could back in the day. Put him anywhere on the offensive or defensive line, I don't care. Nobody's stopping Ben Wallace from getting where he wants to on the field. The man was a tank and able to straight up put a stop to Shaq backing him down in the post at times. And Ben actually has a lot of prior experience of football. He was an all-state linebacker in high school and actually got a full ride scholarship to Auburn for football. But he loved basketball so much that instead he decided to go play at a community college. 
if any NFL team scout or anything has ever seen Steven Adams set a screen that knocks a guy over and knocks the wind out of them without him even moving an inch, then I'm sure they definitely like to have him on their offensive line. The man is literally a brick wall. And Jimmy Butler will back that up with him claiming that Steve is one of, if not the pure strongest player in the NBA. I mean, imagine him putting on more weight to be a lineman and someone trying to get past this Viking of a man to get to his quarterback. It's not happening. And with all those things said about Adams, I don't need to explain anything about Shaq. And unless he's playing against whatever team Glenn Davis would make it on, Shaq would have very few men to worry about. 7 foot 1, over 300 pounds on either the offensive or defensive line, and he'd be unstoppable. <laughs> For cornerbacks and safeties, it makes a lot of sense that great NBA defenders would transfer into those roles pretty well, because they're great at keeping up with players and stopping them in whatever the context is. And with Paul George's size and wingspan, I think it'd be an easy job for him, and probably the position he'd fit best in. He would not fit in better than Kawhi Leonard though. Kawhi is nearly just as athletic as PG, but he's got monster hands, is the better defender, and just imagine a 6'3 receiver running down the field trying to shake off 6'7 Kawhi Leonard. The guy that LeBron can't shake off most of the time. And keep in mind, Kawhi would still be one of the tallest players on the field at all times. I mean, honestly, Kawhi at cornerback or even safety, at least in my mind, is definitely one of the safest bets for a very successful NFL career. I do think that he'd make a great fit at wide receiver too for obvious reasons, but a much better one at cornerback. John Wall would be another great fit at cornerback because he plays with that street ball basketball style, and I think things about his game would translate over great to the football field. This is assuming he was fully healthy, and if he was, he's a great height, one of the fastest players in the league, and I think he would be able to keep up with most receivers in the league. If not there though, I saw a couple comments about John Wall being a Cam Newton, Michael Vick type of quarterback, and I could definitely see that too. Andre Iguodala. Iguodala would make a good cornerback too for obvious reasons, which I don't need to get into. But I will get into Nate Robinson's case, and he most famously actually tried out for the Seahawks in 2016. He didn't make the team, but Steve Carroll had a lot of nice things to say about him. And I have a feeling that if he was a little bit younger, he probably could have done it, especially after how good he was in high school. He got a football scholarship to Washington, accepted it, and played one pretty good year for them, before deciding to switch to basketball instead. Let this remind you though, I mean, myself too, that keep in mind Nate Robinson is the mini LeBron James, and couldn't make an NFL team at 32 years old, while he was still in top physical shape. So that right there should show you how tough it could be for someone to make the crossover. But he, of course, was still only 5'9". But hey, if he did try football a little bit earlier on, I think he could have given a running back a try too, and been pretty good at it, like a Maurice Jones-Drew type of player. Marcus Smart and Patrick Beverly at safety were easy choices. They're probably a little too slow to be playing cornerback and keeping up with some of the top receivers in terms of speed, but have them in a position where they can lay off their guys a little bit. And I think two guys that are the best pesky defenders and two of the best one-on-one -on -one defenders in the league would do great in that spot. They aren't the best athletes, but I mean, they keep up with the superstars of the NBA, so they would probably adjust pretty well. <laughs> Then for the last positions, I'm not going to say Nash would make it in the NFL, but I'm saying if they needed a kicker from the NBA, it probably would have been Steve Nash due to his past with soccer. And if they needed a punter, Draymond Green. But that wraps things up. This video was a little different than what I usually do, but if you enjoyed, drop a like, comment and let me know, subscribe, and I'll catch you next video.